Today, I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that you might not know about starting your LS tractor in cold weather. Stick with me. Okay, it's 27 degrees in Texas. That's unusual. So this is a cold start for Texas. Um, I don't know, I've never started this tractor in this kind of weather. But here we go. We're going to see what we do here. We'll let the glow plugs do their thing. All right, she says she's ready to go. Boy, she cranked right up. Okay, so look, hold up, hold up. I'm not here to tell you how to start your tractor in super cold climates such as up in the north. Uh, I have no expertise of that. I have no experience of that. I live in central Texas and most of the time it's pretty mild here. But I will tell you this. Yesterday evening uh, when I got home, I had to go out and do some work. I started the tractor up. It was, it was in the 20s. And that's very seldom do we ever get that kind of weather. I'm going to talk about some of the things that I noticed on this tractor that you may not know. So stick with me in this, and in, in, in let's go through this. So don't don't hang up yet. I went out to the tractor yesterday to start it up, and I turned the switch on, I let the glow plugs do their thing. LS started right up like it's supposed to. What I had was a couple of lights that came on. I had a neutral light blinking, and then I had another light that was on that I I, I want to talk about. So I thought maybe it'd be interesting to to give you some information about those lights so that you all know what those are. I do have this light on. I've never seen this before. This is new. Let's see what that's all about. Basically, the red light that's up in the corner, that's a hydraulic fluid pressure light. It is basically what it is. It's saying that the pressure that's going through the, the filter is, is too high. And that light will come on for a couple reasons. One of the reasons that light comes on is if the pressure that's going through that oil filter is too high because there, because you have a bad oil filter and you have a lot of dirt in it and maybe you need to replace that oil filter. So if that light comes on and, and, and it's not going out like it should, uh, then you probably have a bad oil filter or hydraulic oil filter that is. And so you need to replace that, that filter. But there's a second reason that light comes on. And, and sometimes because the viscosity of your oil is too high, uh, that those pressures will be will build a little bit and and it act as if you did have a maybe a clogged filter so that light will come on and stay on until the tractor warms up or that hydraulic fluid warms up so so don't panic okay and everybody don't panic it's going to be fine you just need to make sure that you let that light go out but there's a second light that comes on that's the blinking neutral light that light normally stays solid it does not actually blink unless there's a problem like what we had yesterday. The neutral light will sit there and blink if it's too cold or the oils are too cold. One of the things you need to remember is that if that light's blinking, do not engage your power shuttle shift. The viscosity of the oil is too thick and it, it's not going to like it. Okay, I'll just tell you that. So, so, so let that neutral light stop blinking as well. Once both those lights have gone out, your pressures, your oil pressures are or where they should be. You need to let your tractor warm up anyways. I mean, it, if it's really cold outside, you really need to let it warm up. Now, look, look, I, I know I'm in Texas and you guys that are up in the north are gonna have much better information than I do. I'm giving you what I know uh, here and this is only on the LS MT573. These are the things that I run into that I thought maybe it'd be good to, to cover with everybody to let them know what's going on on the MT573 if those things happen. Okay, you guys up north, you deal with much colder weather than we do, and I and I get that. So so don't don't hammer me into confidence. You don't have no clue about what cold weather is. I look, I, I know that. I, I live here in Texas, I live in central Texas, and, and a cold day for us is anything below thirty two degrees, and then we shut the state down because we can't go anywhere in that kind of weather. And actually, that's a little ridiculous, but it's true. I know that on other brands of tractors the 
The lights will flash just like they do on the, the LS here. They, they may use a different light or something like that, but they do let you know that the uh, oil temperatures are too cold to actually operate the tractor. So, so be nice to your tractor, okay? Check your oil, pre let your oil pressures uh, start to build up. Let the, let the oil warm up. Let your tractor warm up. Let your engine oil warm up and everything. Don't jump on your tractor and take off. Hey, listen, I want to talk about batteries just for a second, okay? I, I saw a video. I'm not here to bash any other channel, not at all, okay? I hope so. So I hope no one takes it like that. But I did see a, a, a rant, basically, on the LS tractor not starting up in, in very cold weather. And he had a low battery, and it barely turned the motor over. In cold weather, batteries do not have the same voltage that they would normally would in a normal warmer day. Okay, they, the, the, amps, the amps are not there. That's why there's this little label on there that says cold cranking amps. If you don't have enough cold cranking amps in a cold day to, to turn that diesel over, you're probably not gonna start it, okay? Or it's not gonna start as easy. Let me rephrase that. Uh, obviously there's other issues, and you guys up north really deal with this one, is you know diesel gelling, and you know then you have oil where the viscosity of that oil gets really thick based upon the cold weather. I understand all that. I know all of that. It's just I want to make a comment about the batteries itself. If there's not enough power in the battery to turn that engine over and get that thing rolling, so that that piston in that cylinder gets enough compression to actually fire the diesel, you're not going to get it started. The other thing is, is that you need to think about, you need to account for anything that's on in your tractor. For example, if you have lights on, uh, you have um, a, a fan motor blowing while your key is cycled, and then you're also cycling that key and you have, um, your glow plugs are, are pulling amperage from the battery. Maybe you have a weak battery and you're pulling amperage from that battery, and then once you have that, you've, you've pulled that amperage for that battery, now the battery's even lower than it was to begin with, and now you're sitting there trying to start the tractor up and it doesn't have enough power to really crank that starter, you're gonna be unsuccessful. So keep in mind that your glow plugs may have to be cycled several times because it takes uh, several cycles to get that cylinder warm enough for that diesel to fire. So I'm 100% sure I missed something, okay? But it's okay. I'm basically just trying to get some basic information out for the cold start on your MT-573. The, there are some things that are not normal for me because I'm not used to seeing them. I'm used to just allowing the tractor to warm up no matter what. But at the same time, I'm also used to a lot of older equipment. I've never owned a new tractor. And so you want to make sure that you pay attention to these details. Uh, I don't think LS is the only one that has these little lights that blink on and off and, and so forth in the cold weather. Uh, take a look at your tractor. Take a look at your manual. I'm only referring to my MT-573. Uh, you may have a different tractor that is still in the LS line that does the same thing, or maybe there's something different about it. All right, look, I don't claim to be an expert. I'm not sitting here telling you I am an expert, not on cold weather starts because I live in Central Texas. So you guys up north may have you know, a different method or something else you do. Uh, I recommend that you not use ether at all especially on these newer tractors. The compression is much higher than uh, the older tractors that have lower compression. Sometimes they use a little ether shot. They even had ether canisters on some of those tractors that you could actually push the button and it would shoot a shot of ether into them and start them up. These new tractors are nowhere near the same. So don't use ether on your tractor, okay? You can damage a piston. You can damage the rings on the piston. You can damage a cylinder. Just don't do that. Hey, look, on these new tractors, don't use ether, okay? So once again, I hope this is helpful to someone. Until next time, thanks.